I wrote a haiku poem for all of you. <clears throat> Feel it bubbling. Butterflies in my stomach. Bile rising up. Threatening my appetite. Until I explode. <laughs> yo yo, what's up KP squad? Welcome back to some more gaming content and to some more Doki Doki Literature Club. Look at these girls. They're so pretty. <laughs> um, last we left off, um, I believe we were walking Sayori home and she got real deep in the whole like, well, what if Yuri wanted to walk home with you? And I was like, uh, I would still walk home with you, bit because we best friends <laughs> and we about to be some more possibly what what. <laughs> so we're going with that now. Met to go with Natsuki. Now we're going with Sayori. Totally fine. Let's get back into it. <laughs> and I believe we were here. So we were just about to write another poem. I believe our third poem? Second or, second or third poem of the game. Um, speaking of poems, I hope you guys liked that little haiku poem I had for you at the beginning. Um, I know it's a little... Ick. But it's dramatic and that's what we're going for, right? <laughs> so anyway, let's go ahead and write our poem. Also, real quick, do you like the background? Because I just got this galaxy light and I freaking love it. And I just wanted it in the background for something interesting to look at. I don't know. <laughs> I have no other way of making it like really big. Um, just this small little circular thing for now, but I'm gonna eventually figure out more of that. Anyway, <laughs> we're writing a poem. Uh, color. Should we like speed run this this time? <laughs> Vacation. Romance. Hope. Peace. Cheeks. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought of a different kind of cheek. Anyway, uh, pure. Daydream. Journey. Extreme. Nature. Uh, whoa. <laughs> Contamination. Uh, vertigo. Rainbow. Calm. Fickle. Marshmallow. Swimsuit. Depression. Uh, vivacious. Or vivacious. I don't know how you say that. <laughs> Speed run! <laughs> Oh man. Grab the buttons. <laughs> I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Will you practice in piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. <gasps> Undertale? <laughs> Frisk, is that you? Go there. <laughs> Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out with the festival, too. Nah, I can't wait for the festival! It's gonna be great! Eh? Were you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Huh? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name, Monika. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, um, I believe it's Ika means uh, squid in Japanese. <laughs> That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. <laughs> uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Nehe, <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. <laughs> Sayori's sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Uh, oh. <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? Just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. 
Jeez, you worry too much about me. <clears throat> I'm fine, see? Sarah shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright, if you say so. Maybe we should have wrote the Natsuki poem this time. <laughs> oh well. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back towards everyone else. But the conversation is already dispersed, with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who shuffled through some papers at her desk. <clears throat> Riley, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems to be a bit downcast lately. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind. Well, I'm surprised I'm not the one ask asking you, Riley. You certainly know a lot better than I do. Or know her a lot better. <laughs> Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Uh, sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no, it's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh? Are you sure about that? I'm not gonna make another John Cena joke. <laughs> she seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Riley. Me? What on earth would you come to that conclusion? Oh, well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but. She already talks about you more than anything else, you know. Hmm? She's been so much happier ever since she joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? <laughs> no way. Not he. She already is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It, it's not any different now than it always has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Riley. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because you're, that's just how she is when she's around you? Uh, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so I'll try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls us to club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. <laughs> I wonder what she was talking about, Siri. I got my poem right here! Right here, it's for me! It's a haiku! <laughs> We'll go to Sari first because we're concerned. Hi! This is our best one so far. It's really, really nice, Riley. Uh, thanks. Mm hmm. Sari, so you've been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? Eh? Of course! Everything is fine! Maybe I'm just a little tired today. Eh. Do you want a nap or something? No, that's silly! Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Alright. You ready? 
I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Gibby does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end... Yeah. I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Why, why the music away? Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Oh. Oh wait! Mate! <laughs> of course I do! But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me, and I have sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. And this is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only one exci the only exciting thing in my life. So sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. Sayori? No. Riley, I don't deserve this. Don't be crying. Girl, don't cry. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? <laughs> Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you have fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori! I glance around the room to make sure nobody's noticed this. Sorry. I've probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sorry shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself, puts on a smile. Oh, it's nothing, Riley. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I want to go home a little bit early today. Sorry. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I could say anything else, Sari cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. But your poem! <laughs> I guess we'll go with Yuri next. Well done, Marley. You've definitely improved your writing over the course of these few days. Has my advice been helpful to you? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm glad. Look at the... <laughs> Sharing your writing like this. It's a lot more fun and rewarding than I anticipated. I need to remember to thank Monica. I think we all felt a little awkward at first. But now it seems like everyone is enjoying sharing their writing and seeing what others think. I guess I- Oh, I guess I can't really disagree. I was afraid this whole thing would be a chore. But it's a great way for me to spend some personal time with the girls in the club, eh? <laughs> well, it's been fun getting to know everyone in the writing. And I guess doing some writing myself. Well, have you learned anything about yourself, Riley? Uh... Well, you know how I like to say that writing is a very personal way to get in touch with yourself. In the end, it doesn't matter if you're a good writer or a bad writer. And even my opinions are just opinions, you know? As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. <laughs> Why me? Why, well, you're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is this one? <laughs> Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Eh? I mean, I've become so, someone who puts me in this fearsome. How unlikable of me. Yuri, it's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry I, that I was overthink and, and come to these sort of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Overthinking? Being dislikes. Gibby? Oh, what am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. Do you want to show your poem now? Okay. Here. Beach! <laughs> A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of Earth chastically meets the surface, under a clear blue sky and expanse of bliss, but beneath gray rolling clouds and endless enigma, the easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes 
Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle, yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back, and I abandon my peace to erode at the shore, drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. Damn. Deep. It's nice. I like it. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard. After yesterday, Natsuki and I... Uh, it was amusing that we wrote about something familiar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me. It's good for me to calm down my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Let's go read Natsuki's beach poem then. <laughs> This one's all right. All right? Well, yeah. It doesn't blow me away. But there's nothing I really hate about it. It's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Siori's poem from yesterday. Eh? You think so? Yeah. Well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. They never really struck me as her type. Siori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone so fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she'd probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. I'll be your beach. Oh. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished that di what? That diminished your wonder over the years, but today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light, the walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. I'll be, I'll be the beach. <laughs> Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams, and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea, and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach <laughs> that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that made your heart leap in a way you thought you had left long ago. This sounds like a fucking song. Oh, but if you let let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. Why is this kind of good, though? Natsuki? What happened? <laughs> it's less cutesy and more, like, serious. It, but it's still cutesy in a way. It's like a cute little love song. It's a little love poem. Who's this about? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome! Kinda hard to write anything negative about the beach. Well, Yuri's take on it was a little more solemn. Well, that's... Jeez. She better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Ugh. You could really see her doing that, too. Being able to write about a simple topic that's trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical, too. There's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. 
Yes. <laughs> anyway, Monica. Hi, Riley. Have you thought about what you want to submit for to perform at the festival? Well, this poem. <laughs> Being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people. I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I am sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure, here we go. <laughs> I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Ah, it's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and Sayori's poems have been getting more and more similar to each other every day. I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't you? Uh, I guess you could say that. Although we kind of grew up as best friends, like, I haven't seen as much of her this past year. But since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. Uh, that reminds me about how Sayori's been a little bit off today. Yeah? Did she tell you something? Uh, well... Riley, you haven't been learning with her, have you? Of course not! I'm a trainer like I always do! Alright, just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. Okay, but she already left the... Sayori's been acting so much happier ever since she joined the club. What could have happened all of a sudden? Well, never mind. This really isn't the time to be talking about this. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Alright. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am. The feather. Lost adrift the sky victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day this, the wind was, blah, blah, oh my god. <laughs> Until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall and fall, and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amounts to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with the breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Bam. Is the lady who knows everything God? Because, you know, as Ari has said, God is a wolf! <laughs> My god, you were held like a feather by Ariana Grande? <laughs> I wish I was you. <laughs> you know... I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything. But it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> Are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. <laughs> anyway, here's one of those writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good, or okay, or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it, and the things you can work on. It's so much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for telling. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? 
Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you just say something strange just now? Yeah. Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. Deviated from your usual catchphrase when you're just in the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Ugh. Standing in the air is coming foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Well, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on! Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. I guess so. I hope she's alright. Seriously? All times to not go home with her? You picked the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no! First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I don't want to force it. Oh. A curious expression coming from Yuri of all people. Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What'd she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Let's go be making cupcakes. But we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted! And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sarah so will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh... Um... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I, I'm useless. No, no, that's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. And now Natsuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. Guess I never gave Sarah enough credit. But I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Giddy, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Oh, um, thought that. I... I love atmosphere. Your expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Riley. The one who is truly useless. I feel that! <laughs> I would say that! <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, uh, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. It'd be really- I would be really appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Is Monica suggesting... Is, is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they gonna respond to a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's gonna give me a choice. She shouldn't be sitting on your- and you shouldn't be sitting on your plan anyway. Now she tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Oh. If I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baby on your own. Riley may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So, therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that! How are you gonna be able to make a few decorations anyway? I don't think you're just making excuses for Riley to- What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Come on, guys, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Riley to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So, I'm sure he's interested in- You literally just said- I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we sell this already? Uh, yeah. Riley, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course I'm gonna go with... I'll pick Sayori! Uh, save for a second. <clears throat> she did say that, you know... Save for important decisions. Um, I'm gonna go with Sayori, because I live right next door to her. <laughs> I'm gonna help Sayori. Because some seem not right. Even though I really would like to help Natsuki and see what that looks like, but... We're gonna go with Sayori. I mean... 
If it's gonna be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors, and... But Monica said... Monica said that Sayori wasn't help- was helping her. Jeez, you really hate us that much? No. Sorry, I- I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Just stick at the club, okay? Natsuki, then I'll go help- Well, baking sounds like it could be fun. And you guys made it sound like a lot of work, so it could probably use two people. Don't worry, baking is a ton of fun. You'll definitely agree. Just a minute ago, you were saying that that's because... Never mind, okay? Well, anyway, you'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it after all. That's good. You know Yuri's being melodramatic. It's a little hard to not feel bad. So that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yes! Everything except the performance is going to be awesome! I don't think that really counts. What about you, Riley? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's still sulking. <laughs> now she starts fighting too. It's not? I mean, it's not that big a deal or anything. Well, it might not be just that. I think that Yuri might just be feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do, and then nobody offering to help. It doesn't mean... Uh, Natsuki glances back and forth between everyone with a worried expression. Look! Natsuki goes over and puts her hands down on Yuri's shoulder. Yuri, you really are the most talented one here, and... And you're going... And you're going to help make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too. But you're going to make the atmosphere special. That'll be really important for the way that people feel during the performances. So you need to stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. <laughs> Natsuki releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. I didn't mean that, did you? Uh, not really, but... Yuri isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Natsuki's words. Natsuki, of all people, would be saying such encouraging things. But I begin to understand. Natsuki was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would, would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best. And all of us are going to make it a really great event. Yeah. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there's nothing more for today, so I guess it's time for us to head out. Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely had to do any reading today, so... Fair enough, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I just follow Monica and Yuri out the door as they chat between each other. Um, where are you going? Oh, am I supposed to stay here? Eh? <laughs> He's done to figure out our plans for this weekend. You literally would have gotten home and realized you didn't even have a way to contact me. Oh, that's true. I have no idea how that slipped my mind. Jeez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? You better not make it weird or anything. Why would I do that? <laughs> no, it's gives me her number. Okay, I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait, you're coming to my house? Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? I mean... I just figured that since I'm the one helping, I would be going to your house. Yeah. Yeah, right. Like I could have a guy over at my house. My dad would kill me. Really? That's kind of strict if you ask me. Yeah, how do you think I'd feel? Can't do anything when my dad is home. Anyway, I just needed to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I needed from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. Yeah. I'm really going to show you why I love baking so much. So you better look forward to it. Oh? Didn't you say you were just going to give me the dirty work? Well, I was j just saying that. It's not like I could act like in front of everyone. That I was looking forward to this. Wait, really? Well, kind of. Just because I never got to bake with someone else before. That's all it is, so. Alright, I get it. Sorry for overreacting. Anyway. I'll be heading out now. See you on Sunday. Uh. Yummy. <laughs> Bitch, spit it out. <laughs> Can't believe this. Natsuki's gonna be coming over to my house on Sunday? 
Even though I would have preferred to do this with Siori. My anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty much used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Siori finds out about this? It's not, it's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. I'm starting to doubt that, but you never know! Should we save it here? Hmm. I've only been recording for over 30 minutes. But there's still more to go. We'll get going, it's fine. <laughs> it's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Natsuki's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll act any different when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot. We sent each other one after... Wait. We sent each other one after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into a conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone, using tons of emojis and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things, but I kind of saw that one coming. <laughs> But, putting Natsuki aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her at the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Natsuki comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her, I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. <clears throat> the house is quiet. I'm so scared. Sarah isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom when I where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Ryan. I sit down in her room. Sarah forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sarah's room is as, as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, you wouldn't be such a mess. It's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to be seeing Natsuki today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Siri had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah. So it's just me and Natsuki then? Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a different, in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing after you left on Friday. If something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Riley. Meh. Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Say Ori. I grabbed Sarah by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh. <laughs> so it gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Riley. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You just seen me for the first time. Seeing what? 
What are you talking about, Siri? <laughs> you're really just gonna make me say it, aren't you, Riley? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. <clears throat> How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Hmm? Why is it that you never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't under- Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> you don't understand at all, Riley. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. It also feels like a bat being swung against my head. Ahaha. <laughs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then, I discovered something else, too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club feels like a spear going through my heart. So, that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. Ahaha. <laughs> You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Riley. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. No. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish, and I was punished by my heart hurting in a way I couldn't understand. And now you came here, and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish, that's all I am, and that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Damn. Without thinking, I once again grab Sarah's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Riley! Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Riley. Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. I need this. Sarah barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you'd better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. Gently, Sarah finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all very scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Riley. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your house is so hard. And that's really scary, too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sarah lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival's tomorrow. Yeah. It's gonna be fun, right? Yeah. 
How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh, it's what I want. I promise. I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Zuri so wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. All days, it's supposed to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't! Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Nott's gonna meet me at my house. At the very least, do you, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sarah shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. I understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but... I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Natsuki is about to come over, too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much. And we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. <clears throat> just that. Uh... Oh, I didn't mean to click that. Ah, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna save. It said something about waiting a while and then not see who's gonna come over. <laughs> um, I'm gonna end it there. <laughs> um, on a very sad bitter note <laughs> bittersweet um sweet little Siri needs all of our love and affection now <laughs> must protect <laughs> anyway <coughs> that's all for me for this episode tune in tomorrow for the next episode helping Natsuki bake cupcakes apparently <laughs> that'll be interesting I will see you guys tomorrow in the next one so until then, stay true, stay you, and stay quiet. See ya.